Hello and welcome back to the Reaper. So we've recently started a kind of tutorial series of air-to-air -air combat. We've looked at missile fighting, missile defensive, uh, BFM moves, dogfights, and all that kind of stuff. And you guys have requested to add on to that um, something a bit different, which is to um, see what the thinking of a pilot should be when in a dogfight. So. The way I thought of doing this was we do dogfights and we kind of speak out loud our thoughts. So I'm going to say, the guys behind me is high energy, I need to get high energy, I need to turn right, you know, as I'm doing it. Um, and we will do a little bit of that, just, just to show you that. But the guys have had a better idea. They thought, let's go do some dogfights, then let's analyse them together on the TAC view, you know, the 3D model where we can move things about. And then we've got some pretty experienced guys, they're all probably going to be talking over each other, but uh, we've got some experienced guys with us today who can then pick that apart from a pilot's perspective and say what that pilot should be thinking at that time. And without it being kind of live, it get, we get more time to think about it and disagree and argue and whatever we're going to do about it. Okay. So first of all, we're going to go and record the dogfights. Um, I'll speak out my thought. I'll do the first one. I'll fight against someone and I'll just speak out my thoughts. Now, as you all know, I'm not a very good dogfight and never will be. Some of these guys are uh, the top guys in here. Um, in our team so um, we will have some good experience as well right so guys I'm gonna be a blue f15 just on this first one if okay first me versus Graham and I'm you don't say anything Graham I'm gonna try and talk my thoughts through this as I make a hash of this what's your angels Graham you see directly on your nose can I should be on your nose and angels 19 angels 19 that's where I am sweet he's off to the right at one o'clock got it right hello Graham Prepare to meet your maker. Right, so I'm thinking as I'm going, it will, uh, what I'm going to do is I want to turn around here as quickly as I possibly can. The best way in my knowledge to turn a fight around is burners on and pull up. It's going to slow us down the quickly as possible and allow us to turn around. And it's giving me potential energy to get on top of him. So now I can get on top of him. I'm going to pull. I have unfortunately stalled it, but I am an idiot. So the max power until we get up to kind of 450 knots. So and that allows us to put the six. Now we're going to go to a lag maneuver to get on his six because we want to keep our speed up and not allow him to point his nose at us. So I'm going to aim behind him. I'm going to aim behind him. Aim behind him. Now I want to get my speed back up. Uh, he's going to have to come down because uh, conservation of energy. He's going to have to come down. He has allowed him to turn tighter than me. So what I want to do now is scoop around the back of him quickly. He's low on energy. He can't turn quickly. So I'm going to try and scoop around the back of him. Can't do it, and he ha is now beating me, which is a bit annoying. Right, he has got our six fair and square. It's time to do something rash. So he is going to be lower energy than us. Actually, that may actually be wrong. In fact, he's shooting us. Hmm, this isn't going well. Right, I'm going to need extreme measures now. I'm hoping that I'm higher energy than him. I'm going to go for a climb and see if we can outpower him here. And we'll flip over once we've figured so we've got enough separation from him. Which I think is now. We've got to make him make sure that we can run his speed down so he can't get a snapshot of me. Okay, I'm going over now. Hopefully he's not going to be able to get a snapshot of me. Hello, Graham. No snapshot for you. And what I'm going to do now is I might be able to get a snapshot on him. I didn't actually think about that, but... Yes, sir. Ooh, is anyone's game now, Graham? Right, I'm going to go low. I'm going to go for speed. And I'll try and get around the back of him. I don't want him to be able to turn into me, so I'm going to get around the back of him again. Where's his back? Over speeding. Off the throttle. Oh, bollocks, I've lost him with my old man eyes. He's on my six again. Ah! Right, I'm going to need to evade again, so I think I'm higher energy than him again, so I'm going up again. Without just running away, this is the only way I know to break someone's uh, break someone on my six I see him down there I've got to get good eyes on him to make sure he can't gun me and over to avoid that gunfire and I'm gonna make sure he can't get the snap so I'm gonna pull hard now oh he got me and I'm a dead man well that's what happens when cap drives a dogfight left engine fire. right who wants to go next guys left. I can do f18 if you want go on. yeah just blast in f18 it's um all we're trying to do is get some data to look at later Oh, God help me. Are you, um, <laughs> are we guns? Guns only? Yes, and you yeah. can't fire until the merge. Only... And merge. Hornet versus Hornet. Weom. Oh 
we got a kill! Oh, nearly. Yeah, He's dead. Man. I killed his plane. Oh, nice. Alright, next, let's get his chop chop. Hello, you're in. I'm still loading in. You son of a bitch. I'm in. Right, put yourself in blue. Okay, guys, spawn in, please. In you go. We have a merge. Supersonic Hornet. Hey guys, I'm going out for a night. See you guys. Yeah. Why this is fair and square? It's a good example of a downward spiral. It is a very good example of a defensive downward spiral. Oh, I'm not sure if it's really defensive, but anyone anyone fire, it's just kind of. It's interesting. It's too much to at the moment. Downward spiral. It's just a downward spiral. Yeah, it's literally in angle, but one aircraft's got a distinct energy event, which you'll see you'll win the rate fight in a minute. So every time they go around the circle... Yeah, you can see this guy's catching up. The only reason he's catching up is he's going to follow his energy trying to turn with him. Well, what happens when some guy hits the bottom is the question. Yeah, have to do some funky stuff. Do that pilot shit. And do some of that pilot shit, F-15, because you're in trouble! Alright, let's see if the F-18 overcooks it. Yeah! Do well done! Oh. <laughs> Good <He> fight! <laughs> now, there's going to be loads to talk about in that. Okay, chop chop, we're not really here to dogfight, so let's just get the next pair up and going. I suppose I better have a... Can go at some, I wish I could fly one of these goddamn planes. Right, someone come fight me in a red aeroplane. Oh, lovely, mate. Oh, great. My favourite. Hello, Joker. Permit to meet your makers. I'm trying a different technique at this time. Can't get some. Can't get some. Oh shit, I should be talking. Right, so I went low this time to fox him. And what I'm trying to do now is almost get right round the back of him so he can't turn to me in time. Although I get the feeling he will be able to. Let's just see. And I've kept it nice and fast, 600 knots. It's really hard for him, I think, to uh, get a fix on me. I'm going to burn a lot more of my potential energy off, but I think I'm doing all right. Now I'm going to do a different move. I'm going to cut right down below, almost like a, uh, what do you call it, a offensive low... Damn it, I can't remember the move, chaps. But I'm doing it. Okay, we're kind of evens now, but he's got the altitude advantage, possibly the speed advantage, so... He's gone down. That gives me an opportunity. I'm going to respond by going up. I know that's not normal, but... No, oh, fuck it, how did he do that? Cheater. He's obviously got the hacks on at this point. So, 
right, we're going to have to evade. So, what we do have is a lot better dive than an F-18. So, nose down. We don't want to let it intercept and get 600 knots. And then, we're going to pull him in a massive right orbit. And what he's going to do is give lead on me. But he won't be able to give lead because I'm going to be at 9G already. And he can't go above 9G. So, I am going to hopefully confuse the shit out of him here. We're about to be confused, son. So he's going to be stuck in a lag pursuit now. Now he's confused and probably flown in a different direction. I'm going to go up, try and re-establish where he is, and go down for a shot. And it's worked! Supercab did something right. Oh shit, no, he hasn't. He's there. There's a flesh wound, and that is all part of my plan, so don't worry, viewers. Right, he's putting himself real super low energy, so I'm going to burn away and try and get away from him again. 600 knots in the packet, here I come. How does he catch up? Definitely cheat. Okay. Well, we're still alive. Right, we've got some gun jinky coming on. Whoop! Missed. Right, let's try again. Just put him under some big G so he can't go to lead. Jink. Jink. Damn it. That's not jinking. He is jinking. Hydraulics failure. I've like found my arse. Hydraulics failure. There's a fault in my aircraft. It wasn't my fault. Hydraulics failure. Okay, last ditch maneuver. Down we go. Hydraulics failure. I've still got thrust. Thrust is all that counts. Right, let's get real high speed in it now. I know I've got a better high top speed. And let's get some distance and then let's tumble right round back on his face. Hydraulics failure. Hydraulics failure. Okay, so he's stuck trying to catch Hydraulics up. Hydraulics failure. Now what we're going to do is this. Watch Hydraulics and learn. Failure. Hydraulics Beat this, Hydraulics sir. Failure. Hydraulics failure. Hydraulics failure. And then I'm going to go for a real Hydraulics tight failure. turn around here now. Hydraulics failure. Off the gas. Hydraulics failure. Let's go for a max turn right now. Come on, Joker, where are you? Show yourself. Hydraulics failure. Power back on. Hydraulics failure. Ah, he's still behind us. We're going into the soup. Oh, this ain't good. This ain't never going to be a good thing. Punching out. That was needlessly long. Tap your. I think it's like it's a, a warbird. Maybe that's my style, Graham. I think Matt and uh, or who's who you want to find? Uh, I don't care. I was just really not important. Someone to fight Mav and then just get on All with right. the review. Me and Mav, let's go. No joy, I right, tally. Tally. Alright guys, that'll do. Okay, so we've done some dogfights there, so it was all very good fun and whatnot, but now we've got to go and analyse them. Now, chaps, we've got to try and remember, the natural thing for you guys to want to do is to be able to, is to try and teach how to do a dogfight here. And that is, in a way, kind of what you're going to be doing. But remember, the, 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 the mission statement from the public was, what is the, or what should be, the, uh, uh, the thought process? So that is, I guess that's the same thing, isn't it? Kind of the same thing. Just to bear in mind that when we're looking at this, we're trying to answer the question, what is the thought process? So, guys, 
Um, well, I'd say rule number one is don't panic, which always happens. Which always happens, and I always do. Okay, so hang on, I'm just getting myself set up here. Uh, for some reason, it's not working. This is so. If you guys can see this, I'm going towards. We're merging at twenty thousand feet. Both of us are going to be about Mac one, um, uh, and let's watch it from Cap's point of view, shall we? Because I lose. Um, so uh, stop putting some ideas out, guys. What should I be thinking at the moment? <laughs> What side is on, and what's the closure? So the way I, the way that I would go through it is there is a checklist pre-merge. It's four things: defend, engage, shape, lead, turn. That's four things you need to do. Now, when you're guns only, you can't defend. Uh, engage can't do that because we're three nine line passing before we're doing that. But you can shape the merge, and you can take the lead. Right. So what I mean by that is you need to. Give yourself the best chance to go into the final. Now, I'd suggest both of you probably uh, probably about right on the merge speed, so 450 knots, that's part of the shaping. Mm -hmm. And then you want to give yourself as much turning room as you can. So both of you, you know, if to go into that rate fight, you want to give yourself the opportunity to turn before you merge. That's the lead turn. That's interesting. So you're talking about turning before the merge? Absolutely. Oh, never thought of that before. So what would be, I don't. I guess there's no real way of op, uh, measuring that, but... I mean, you see, you, that's the way that you should do it, but in this environment you can't do that, because you, you can you, only do anything after. You can, in the sense that if you know you're going to want to turn, say, left, okay, and you place yourself on the right side of him, so you've got that greater yeah. turn into the turn type yeah. thing. So it's about positioning on the left or right of the enemy, on yeah. what side you want to merge him on, stuff and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you can control that then, can't you? You can, and even, yeah, that's what you mean. Hmm. Interesting. You can influence it. Ultimately, if he decides to point his nose at you, then you have to shape in other ways, namely altitude mm -hmm. uh, or speed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Regards speed, uh, what would you, okay, let's say if we can't shape left and right for whatever reasons, what could we do with our speed to influence this? So that's going to depend on the threat. Uh, it depends what you're fighting against. In an, F an F-15C versus F-15C, you know, they're both kind of all, oh, they are all-round fighters. Um, so you're just going to probably want to fly either a rate fight or a single circle fight. Um, rate fight, 450 knots, mm -hmm. probably good enough. Single circle fight, maybe 300. Mm -hmm. Um and that you can only try something. In a guns fight, I'd suggest maybe single circle's the way to go because you'll get a shot quicker. Mm -hmm. But it won't be very good. Mm -hmm. But all these things you need to be thinking about as you're flowing into the merge. Um, if, if you go into that merge, 180 to 180, the same speed, the same height, you haven't earned yourself any advantage and you've got to make it all up in the, co in the, in the next phase of stuff. Mm, yeah, I see what you mean. And so just because just I haven't really ever been through this kind of stuff, what what is your determining factor that's going to determine between a, a, a rate fight and a single circle fight? What's, is there going to be a determining factor? It, it would be the threat So uh, and your own aircraft's capabilities. Mm -hmm. so, for example, Typhoon, F-16, uh, our rate fighters, they're never going to want to get into a, a single circle fight, that yeah. nose-to-nose -nose fight. Um, so they will always try and give themselves that lateral separation mm -hmm. A high speed, whereas uh, maybe a fulcrum or an F eighteen is going to go in single circle. So, I see, so it, depends it just on depends on how your aircraft designed and how it best fights as to what you. How interesting! Yeah, I never thought anything about that. Okay, guys, it's good work so far. So, anything else we want to talk about before the actual merge? Good flares from Gray, and that's exactly what you should be doing on the way in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> really. Yep. Okay, why is that? Obviously with guns only, it's not a problem, but you're keeping the bad ah, guy's weapon on the rails, that defend, engage, shape. Right. So is this in case he fires an IR missile at you? That you uh, should be yep. But in this scenario, it's actually because you didn't see me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, gotcha. Right. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, that's already a lot to think about that I didn't even know existed, so let's carry on. You'll, you'll learn during this cap that there's a hell of a lot to think about in these fights. There's also going to be an issue what you do, Cap, in, in five seconds. 
if you step back a little bit, Cap, maybe, yeah, just about there, and go from the top down. So you'll, so you'll see um, there is some space between between you and looking at where you pass, it's going to be, a, what, 700 feet mm -hmm. thereabouts. So what the blue fighter wants to be doing now is to, so that ideally he he is pointing underneath. So he's pointing at the bad guy as he passes underneath. Okay. And that's, that's your lead turn. That's if you turn. do that and the other guy doesn't, you are at 90 degrees of advantage immediately. Right. Okay. So you're gonna if I hear a thousand feet or thereabouts, point my nose kind of along this line down and along this line here. That's giving me a few degrees advantage. Then even if you pointed at him right now, mm -hmm. you are not 180 past. You know, you maybe yeah. a 170, mm -hmm. um, which is better than being 180. Roger. Right. So that's something to think about. Okay. Fine, guys. And um, I, should, I guess at this point as well, I know you'll almost never get a merge like this where everything's equal, you know, and, and level and whatnot. But assuming that it is, um, should my thought process, I mean, what would I decide about? Do I want to go lateral turn or I see some people go for vertical turn, uh, vertical upturn. Is there any reason why we should ever use the vertical upturn rather than lateral? Your energy state. Your Mach 0.95 is going to be really hard for you to do tight turns right um now having said having said that uh yeah if you've got a lot of energy going upwards is is not a bad idea but mm. i wouldn't go up if you've only got a hundred feet of vertical turning room if you had stacked yourself two thousand feet above him you can apply that lead turn in the vertical and you can turn before he gets on top of you to be passing his tail in the vertical with 90 degrees of advantage if you see so we're saying that if we were going to do a vertical upturn, we should have been 2,000 feet above him. We should be above him. L lower. No, you want to be below. Or lower, because then we'll come out like that. Uh, ah. and, and actually, if he was 6,000 feet below, you could basically roll out on his tail if he did nothing. Right. So this but is... a, a hostile would never give you that much, but you want to get as much as you can. Right. So this is, yeah, so this is again about pre-merge uh, pre uh, uh, planning then as well. Uh, like you said, you know, he'll if you go down, he'll probably come down as well. But, um, okay, interesting. Okay, so as we touch wings there, um, anyone want to... Uh, so what we're looking at is what the blue plane is thinking at the moment, and uh, so what we should be thinking at the moment is I want to... Oh, God, so it's an equal plane. Well, it's an equal plane, you, so there's no difference between what single turn or, in this case, or, or turn rate by, is there? Well, what you should be thinking is looking at him as you pass. Which way is he going to turn? And mm -hmm. does he have the advantage in that single circuit, or do you want to push it into a two-circle? Mm -hmm. You can see he's already started your turn, his turn, whereas you're going straight. He's got the distance um, separation to be able to pull around faster than you can. Mm -hmm. So you should probably be looking for a two-circle fight in this rather than a one-circle fight. So you should be pulling left instead. Mm-hmm. And when we're talking about the amount of circles, we're talking about our speed as well, aren't we, presumably? Or Well, one uh, one circle is a rate fight, and a two circle is a radius fight. Other way around. Other way around. I always get them confused. Roger. Um, so, yeah. Right, okay. So, your min radius speed is going to be around, around 250. Uh, in a fighter, it's it's not going to be you know maybe plus or minus thirty either mm -hmm. side of that, but mm -hmm. around there. So if you ever find yourself in that in that single circle fight, you want to be at those speeds straight away. Five hundred eighty three knots. You you want to stick with some sort of two circle rate fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we were going for the single the circle, the 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 the, the tight turn, um, should we have slowed down before the merge? That is a technique. Yeah. Interesting. I might try that next time. I might go in at kind of 300 knots and just do the quick, just do the single circle, depending on the fighter choice. That's interesting. So, um, blast my memory. Yeah, okay, right. So what would you consider a turn rate fighter then, out of the ones we get in DCS? Uh, I don't really know which one is a, more of a turn rate fighter than another. Does anyone actually know? I suppose we know, do we? I mean, the F-15 is, isn't bad at it. The F-18 can do it, but it always it, you don't have the G available to keep the speed mm. under control in the F-18, or that's what I found, and you just black mm. out and die, which is great. 
Mm. And when the F-16 comes in, that, that will be full up uh, a two-circle Ray fighter. For sure. And that's just how it's designed, presumably? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Okay, guys. Right, um, I guess we've just got to go on with whatever I'm doing in the blue and adjust our thoughts with that. So I've decided to go up. I've decided, whoops, I've got plenty of energy. How do I get that back? Uh, yeah, you see, this is the first issue, Kat. You have bled all of your energy off. Yeah, I noticed that. In the upturn, so you but, are basically stalling at this point and you can't do anything to influence the fight because you're just too slow. But why do you still, still got though? loads of energy? He, because you turned too tight, you turned too far, hard, far too hard. Mm. You look at our if turn you watch, circles. You turf that. Was that? See, Graham's in a much more favorable position with his energy. So, compared. Cap, you have a very. If you um, go on a bit further, you'll see you have a tighter turn in yeah. the vertical. Whereas I, I take a left turn and I point my nose toward the ground slightly. So I'm gaining a bit of energy as I'm pulling. Yeah, I see that. You're about five to three degrees down, and you're turning. Yep. So something to consider here. Uh, if you were fighting a real fight and you had missiles mm. on, Graham's dead. Yeah, because I've got him in my ball, pretty much. Yeah, you actually flew that for a missile fight really nice. Mm. Um, the red lines that we, you know, the lift vector lines poking out of the top of the mm. thing that I'd be looking at throughout because it's the most important thing probably to BFM. Uh, when you came up the hill, your lift vector went on him. It stayed on there. It went in and now it, it's in lead, but you're actually pointing at mm. um, Graham's mistake here was staying low when you went up mm -hmm. um, because he basically gives you that ab ability to roll your lift vector around to do whatever the hell you want. Mm -hmm. um, and if you had a Fox 2 right now, he can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So guns-wise, yeah, you did bleed a lot of energy, but you've, you're about to have a really nice kill pick mm, interesting and because we don't have missiles in this case it's good you know it's it's you need to get on their six for the guns i'm guessing like joker said i've just screwed myself because i've got just too slow and it's going to take too long to get back up to 400 knots so i'm guessing that's what's about to go wrong yeah so you're now committed nose down you, mm -hmm. you have to go down mm -hmm. from where you are because your speed's too low and he knows that and what i would what he should do now is point at you and then take that lead turn underneath and then he should get right behind you so let's run that through. So I've literally pointed at him now. And in my, in my head here, I'm thinking, right, I'm behind him. I can just fall behind him here. I can just um, kind of go into a kind of lag and roll behind him. But it just doesn't work out. And I'm guessing because he is so fast compared to me. He's, he's twice as fast as me. And I just can't get the energy back fast enough. Presuming. So let's see. Because you can see what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, ah, oh, let me just drop behind him here like that. It just it's a good thought process. Out. Yeah, it's a good thought process, but... Just the energy doesn't let you do it. No, because look at me. I, I'm only going to get to 300 and I've got to tur turn in again. But this time, no, that's all going to bleed off again. No, no. Look how quickly Graham's... Um, it's kind of... I'm not sure what he's done, really. What have you done there, Graham? I've done a yo-yo there. That's interesting. So what's your thinking there, Graham? When you see me barreling down at you, slow, but... Yeah. Are you just trying to stop me getting your six here, or...? Basically, but I know you're low energy, so I'm yeah. going to pull up and I'm visual on you the whole time you'll see the line mm -hmm. coming out the top of yeah. my aircraft that's pointing toward you the whole time mm -hmm. so i've eyes on you and i'm pulling up and over and reducing my speed so i can get behind okay so you've got a massive kind of temporary turn right there and you're going over the top oh, whereas i'm trying to manage about 400 knots to get my kind of maximum turn rate and you've got a lovely, if you had an aim line X or something, you've got a lovely shot there or, or any missile again. And you didn't go all the way down to um, 100 knots like I did, I noticed. You've kept your speed. I don't know how exactly you managed to do that, but I guess that's the difference here. And we've literally reversed scenarios now. You're now pointing down at me, relatively low energy. And I'm now going round the side here, uh, except you're twice as fast as what I was. So I'm guessing that's about to make the difference. And I'm trying to get my maximum turn rate here. Although I'm not doing very good on G. And you've just fallen in behind. That's what I tried to do to you, but I just couldn't do it. So the difference is, you when you did it to me, I just kept going round. When I did it to you, you yo-yoed over. Um, I guess you'd call it a defensive yo-yo. So if you'd have gone up there, you'd have found yourself in the exact same position again. But instead, you stayed going round. Hmm. 
One of the things that I noticed you commented here, I actually got my notepad out to write some things down. This is serious business. Um, mm. Is you commented a few times, generate separation, mm -hmm. which I, again I understand because you know once you're outside of three thousand feet ish, mm. uh, that gun is going to be really difficult to get any effect of. Mm -hmm. um, but again, taking it forward to Reelsy's BFM, you don't want any separation. You want if you're mm -hmm. defensive, you want that guy to be jammed into the back of you mm -hmm. so that as soon as you turn, you've turned his lead and sorry, his lag into lead uh, and he flies out in front of you. Um, careful generating separation. You know, in, in this position here, 4,000 feet, he's going to struggle to gun you, but you've got the burners in mm -hmm. and he's on your turn and circle. You know, you're going to eat a fox too. Mm -hmm. um, another story for another day, probably, but just something to think about. Roger. Okay, separation bad, Roger. Okay, uh, the reason I've, the reason that I think where that comes from in, in my mythology is I'm used to fighting with the F-15 and I'm used to fighting against things that are not F-15s. And one, I know this doesn't work for missiles, uh, but for guns only, one little technique you can do is just outrun them. But it's not really, like you said, a proper, a real, you know, it's not a realistic tactic, obviously. But okay, that's fine. Well, let's see where this goes. So he's now squarely behind me. He's presumably going to go into just a lag follow now. Try and get his speed up. Um, let's see what happens. So what's he pointing at? Yeah, he's in a lovely lag there of about 10 degrees or something. Had a pop at me, but not much hope. Now, the good thing I've got now is bucket loads of energy, look. So, and I know he's low energy because he's done that yo-yo and he's going to struggle to get that up. So what could I, what should I be thinking? What, what I'm actually thinking is I just want to go up and run away from him. That's what I'm thinking. Now, that's bad. We don't want to do that, as we've discussed. What should I be thinking? I've got twice the energy that he has. He's a mile behind me. What can I do to reverse this, chaps? Well, instead of just running away, you could just go vertical until he stalls, and then you can just that is tail what I do. over. That is literally what I do. Uh, but that's what I'm trying to do. Because yeah. I know he's at 200 knots, and I know that I'm at 500 knots. So I know that I can go straight up. Okay, so we think that's a valid move. Let's watch that through, then. So I pull up to where you could probably initiate just a just a not like a standard turn fight with him as well because you've you you were pretty you know on speed for for the F 15s sustained yeah. turn. You have yeah. the energy to commit to a turn, whereas I can't. Yeah. So a lot of this is about knowing about judging the hostile's energy, isn't it? And making reactionary thoughts based on that. I'm I'm just no good at that. So that was a beautiful. I mean, you rarely get a good example as that where this guy's pretty much stalled out. And um, and we get to just drop down on him. So if I was a decent fighter, I probably could have put my nose on him and shot him here. You very nearly did. If you look, zoom in on me, you're inches away from actually taking oh, me. Yeah, because I've got full control now, 350 knots, and you have got any control of it. Yeah, so so I should have finished it off there, but that's fine. So now we're, we're, we're square one. We've got a weird kind of 90-degree merge, whatever you want to call that. You've stalled out completely. I'm going, I've got beautiful energy, but the problem is I'm plummeting towards gravity at the moment. So the question is now what I should be thinking. Um, I can see that you are, I can see you, I can see you're going to turn right, you're going to turn right and slow. So what I'm thinking now, I think, is I want to go into max right turn rate here. Uh, now thinking about it, that's a stupid idea. Um, from what I've learned today is maybe I should go into single circle now and just turn max uh, min turn. Kind so of here. if you... If you pan that camera to get a, a sort of view of your turn circle as you come around versus his, so maybe like 90 to either side. Uh, something like that, or...? Yeah, a bit, bit more, bit more kind of side on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, if you imagine that that isn't in the vertical mm -hmm. and you are both flying horizontal, mm -hmm. the error you've made there is a pretty monstrous fly-through. Mm-hmm. So what the hostile should be doing is reversing, putting his lift vector on you and pulling mm -hmm. to your six. And if he'd done that, uh, he's now behind you again. Mm -hmm. You're both going down. He's mm -hmm. he's in the control zone. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's a way to think of it is, is always, it doesn't matter what plane it's in, the concept's still a plane. So from that top position after you shot, what do you do about it? Well, if... It wasn't in the vertical. You would probably have flown a high yo-yo mm -hmm. to get yourself, kill your closure, get yourself back on, onto his turn circle. Mm -hmm. And this, a high yo-yo, would be a pull to the horizon and then back left again. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
So the error there is that you've flown through his six too close to him. Right. So we never want to fly through the guy at high speed, basically. Uh, at least, especially going down. Is it fair to say, I never thought about this when, when actually flying, is it fair to say, if we ever want to exit this fight, this is the time to do it? Because I'm at 500 knots with gravity, if I want to exit, and he's, you know, he's got to do a full 180 turn and accelerate, so I could go full burn now and just kind of Mach 1 my way out of there. Yeah, I mean, exit in fights is a black art that isn't mm. practiced very much. Mm. Mm. Because it's terrible. Well, especially with missiles, obviously, but yeah, in guns with guns, it's a you know, it's a real thing, I suppose. Hmm, interesting, guys. Right, should we see what happens then? So I think I know what I'm going to think, and I know it's not right. I I'm going to go into max turn rate here, and I think that's a bad thing to do. Now thinking about it, but let's see what happens. No, I just kind of well, obviously we've got gravity I'm fighting against. So this is interesting. Look how much control Graham's getting now. Yeah, he did exactly yeah. what he should have done Beautiful. with the factor. Let's have a look at that again, shall we? And you can see he's kept his eye on me all that time, which I would have struggled to do. Let's have a look at it again. It's pretty beautiful. So he's, he's watching me now. We're, we're kind of opposites. He's, he knows he needs to flip around now, keeping an eye on me. And he, he's just letting gravity do the work now, isn't he? Yeah, he recognised his fly through really nicely mm -hmm. and acted upon it correctly. And that's where you get this actually pretty nice, pretty nice conversion. 5,000 feet mm -hmm. in the stern is... is Right, so the only thing I've got, well, so at this point I'm thinking, right, I'm going to, at this point I can tell you, I'm thinking he must still be 200 knots after that. And so I go and try the trick again of going up and kind of diving down to get another shot on him. I don't realise he's actually high energy um, and he's going to follow me up this time. And it's going to go... Always assume that they're high energy. Energy. If they're behind you, I always assume that the high energy. Hmm. He doesn't pull too early, he comes in from a lag as well, so yeah. he gets that for a third time. And what happens this time is you pull harder after yeah. I've let a little lag pursue come in, so then I'm higher energy than you would have. Too top. hard to cap, and Graham, he was still Mach 0.7, you were uh, Mach 0.45 or something like that, so... I didn't have, Graham choice. Had I didn't have choice, so I had guns coming at me, I had to do something. That's you it. did, you should have turned the other way. Yeah, 180. You turned into him and let him, it just needs to kill for him. You just made it easy for him. Yeah, I'm dead now, I'm falling backwards. Right, so that's that, chaps. Pretty happy with that. So let's jump onto the next one and see what uh, interesting stuff we've got. It's going to be map. This one's short, isn't it? So, yeah. right, who do you want to follow? Who's who's the goodie? Who's the baddie? Who do we want to? You know, we're doing someone's thought process. Should we do maps? Because uh, we'll swap around afterwards. So, oh, interesting. Look, he's getting a t an initial turn here. So we haven't seen this yet. So let's just bring that forward. So yeah, so, so we can get. Uh... <laughs> So you, an easier time. So you guys have done that on purpose then. You've got that separation there. Uh, sweet. It did that thing. <laughs> it does. Uh, just get that going. Okay, so you've now got a thousand feet separating you. Otherwise, come out with you and speed, co-speed. Why is it so fast? Is that... Right, right so... In, oh, so Mav's turned. So he's banked so that he's... Uh, his lift vector is literally going to kind of go right through him, whereas Joker hasn't done it that quick. So we'd expect to see a, a turn advantage. So what's your thoughts here, then, Mav, on your first fight at this point? So, so that is the lead term, but I'll also caveat it with it's late because I was late getting tally. Mm -hmm. um, so I should have gone earlier than I did. But the, the mech that you see there in terms of the lift vector placement, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll bring myself up here, is nailed. Okay, yeah, because it's literally right on him, isn't it? I, I needed to turn probably three seconds early. Your Roger. Interesting. And what's your what's your thought process now about the next kind of move that you want to do? Are you, are you going to go just round here? Uh, are you going to go, what kind of, are you going to go, well, you're the same fighter, aren't you? So you don't have distinct, any distinct advantage in tactic per se. But no. You know. So turn across the tail and assess for a two circle fight is, is not a bad thing to hang your hat on so I'm just going to turn across his tail take the mm -hmm. lead turn cue and watch him now watching him is where the downfall is because I lose tally and that's why yeah um, it's always a risk isn't it at the end of the day so uh, we'll would sort of play forward but my initial game plan is yep so we're doing good speed and Joker's gone high uh, it was a very late high Joker did you react to him or were you planning to go on? I reacted immediately but I turned a lot soft so I could conserve more energy in the vertical to get more right so we're not going to see you stalling so out so I then. did the opposite of what you did Cap 
So let's see that through then. I ended up like Angels 30. User like 24. The thing, the reason I can't do that though, like you say, is because if I go that high, I can't physically see the fighters anymore. I just, it's so hard to see when you're that high. There's um, a zoom function for a oh, reason. Fuck, I can't do that, boys. Uh, right, <laughs> let's reassess. So Joker's, you know, about to peak here. He's got his 420. Mav appears to still have tally. And um, so you're going after it. You're chasing him up now, are you? Is there? A... Yes. So I see he's going up. If I mm -hmm. stay low, all he does, as we saw before, is he rolls his left act around behind me and shoots me. Mm -hmm. So I have to come up to meet him. I don't have any choice here. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's what I do. And, and my aim is to force him downwards and then I take a lead turn on him uh, as we remerge. Mm -hmm. What actually happens here is that as I... Uh, as my canopy arch comes through and through him, I lose tally, and then I'm mm -hmm. stuffed because my left vector placement probably goes all over the place. Mm -hmm. Something quite interesting. I have a higher speed than Mav when I come out of the vertical. Yeah, you've done well on speed there, and the potential energy difference must be massive. Yeah. Tearing 24,000, 28,000, and slightly more knots. So that was a really nice turn, and the good thing is, with the speed, you've still got control of the bird, unlike I had, and you know, just about within workable alpha. So that's pretty good. Uh, so Mav's basically pointing his jet pretty much at you, more or less, or just just no, slightly, slightly behind him, and yours is a little bit behind him. So you've okay, and I guess Mav's just going to get confused here. Where he loses tally. Yeah, you can kind of see. So that must have been where you've just kind of lost situational awareness here, and uh, and then. The rest is history. Lovely shot. I just sprayed him. Yeah, okay, so that's the end of that one. No. Yeah, nice work. Who have we got here? Allo and Graham. Should we make Allo the goodie this time that we'll try and follow? Well, F. So we've got two different fighters here, but um, I don't suppose any of these. Would I mean? Is there any? So if we got these two fighters against each other, and we're in the blue fighter, um, we're in the F15. Um, what would we say? Our what's our strength? We want to play to. Do we think? Um, it's more powerful. If yeah. we don't do it, I don't. So what does what? what does that mean for us? Does that mean more turn rate? Does it mean we can do more vertical? So if I was the F15 driver here, I would expect the F18 to go a single circle, bleed a speed right down and shoot me across the circle with yep. a missile. Yep. Now, obviously, we can't do that in the guns fight because it, it, it lends itself to something different. Mm -hmm. So I would probably go vertical and make the F-18 round of energy before I... Because you're going to force him to go vertical then? Yeah. Interesting. Well, he either comes comes up with you at some point, even if, mm -hmm. it, if it's that delayed vertical counter, mm -hmm. which is what I did in that last fight, mm -hmm. um, or he comes up with you immediately uh if he does the delay vertical counter, you're probably going to win because you can just stay up in the F-15. How interesting. Right. Okay. Let's play that through there. Uh, interestingly, Allo's pointing a funny angle. Why is that? You, you're cranking him for some reason. Um, one, I don't have visual on him yet. But I know roughly where he is with the RWR and stuff. Okay. That's a fair answer, Allo. So, Graham got a beautiful initial turn. Look at that. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, and that's where I spot him. I fucked up. Hang on. So, look at that turn. He started turning one and a half miles away. He, I think he kind of senses you cranking off to the side a bit there. And so, he's already turned. When he crushes your whatever that thing's called there, he's like already turned about 70 degrees. That's lovely. Yeah, and that's why I pushed the two-circle fight because I know I'm never going to win that one-circle fight. At that. So, yeah, you've got your 400 knots. You're going down slightly. He's gone up, look, he's, no, sorry, he hasn't, he stayed lateral. Uh, he is right. So, he did pure lateral, about 400 knots, I'm guessing, and you have somehow managed to turn rate more than him, even though he got the head start. Now, why the, did that happen? You've lost speed. Look at my speed it. going yeah. into that merge. So, did you say you're going into single circle here, or I miss what you Two said? Two circle. Right. So, on that merge, I can see he's already turning into me. I'm never yeah. going to win that. Yeah. one circle fight so i forced the two circle fight i drop low mm -hmm. to get a low yo-yo essentially mm -hmm. to get that speed and to come up i mean look how I had mm. if i had visual on him at this point i'd have turned even harder to pull mm -hmm. my guns on him 
Mm, could have got a snapshot or something on him. But this the danger of two circle fight is very hard to keep visual because you're turning your back on them. So he's, the only problem is here he's got such a massive energy advantage, hasn't he? 500 knots high pointing downwards, you're pointing up at 300 knots. So that's interesting. But in terms of guns, it's pretty equal. Like if we both took a shot, yeah, it's 50, I yeah, guess take. that's right. So I'm all right in saying he's in terms of the long longevity of the fight, though he's got the advantage at the moment, hasn't he? He's got the better positioning. He's above. He's got the more speed. Uh, so for the next turn, he's going to be. It's going to be much easier for him on the next turn, isn't it? Yes, but right. as you probably see, I still don't have visual on him at the moment. Okay. So what what's also happened there though is because um, uh, Graham went up or stay level. Mm. It's difficult to tell, but he didn't honour uh, Aloe's downward lift act, mm -hmm. and actually he went into that merge with advantage and he's mm -hmm. come out possibly even with disadvantage if you look at the angles um you know maybe a couple of seconds back mm -hmm. uh yep in that rate fight when it is a rate fight down the hill and it's referred to as down the hill because you would always have your lift factor below the hostile in a rate fight always mm -hmm. um because if you don't and I can't remember who does it. I think it's on fight four, which you'll see. That low yo-yo, if if you've got the height below, can be a roll to 90 degrees, pull through the horizon, and then you've chopped off half of that circle. Mm -hmm. So you have to honor the other guy going those low, or you will lose angle. Right. So to summarize then, although the fight, although Ala can't actually see what he's fighting here, he's because he's low yo-yoed here, he's actually turned in terms of seconds quicker and he's about three seconds ahead or whatever that is so i know i can't judge that uh he's he's, he's some seconds ahead but because Allo, because graham didn't respond to that he just carried on kind of laterally without any without any dive he's put himself at a disadvantage then by the sounds of things he just gave up some of those angles yeah mm, how interesting right okay let's uh, carry on and see what happens yeah so you can see Allo obviously can't see the bad guys just flying around in circles now so what the main thing is though i know roughly we've merged because mm -hmm. if you think about a two-circle fight, you both complete the circle, and you should be where you started. Okay. So I know I've completed the circle. Mm -hmm. No, he'll be doing something crazy, so I'm just trying to give myself enough time to find him at this point, which is why I swap directions mm -hmm. and go for another potential two-circle fight. Mm -hmm. It's a bit unlucky, really, because as soon as you flipped over, he's the other side, but so be it. Now, interestingly, uh, Graham's kind of... So you've re-merged, basically, is what you've done. And now, interestingly, Graham is, is doing the low yo-yo turn now, but um, at really high speed. So is it possible, I, wait, I mean, to turn too fast? It looks like it's turning a bit too fast to me. I may be wrong. Is it, uh... What I'm looking at on the, on the right here is the CAS, which I guess is calculated airspeed, uh, um, yeah. which is more useful to the pilot okay. than TAS, yeah, considering yeah. we don't have IA. Yeah. Uh, 500 is too fast for a rate fight, yeah. yeah. So and that, 256 yeah. is arguably too slow. Oh, I see. So this is what they see in the cockpit, isn't it, more or less? Yeah, I think it must be. Interesting. Now, it's it's really difficult to maintain speed in DCS. Mm. Um, I've noticed because you don't have any G feel, so you, you yeah, don't okay. you can't look out the window and kind of know what speed you're at, which you, you can for real. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, right, um, yeah, the only thing you get really is when you're over g and you get the big black. So you can tell when you're 9G, but that's about it. Very. Well, what are you, you going to do about it? Uh, right, okay, so let's carry on and see what happens. So Allo, I mean, the thought process is trying to find the bad guy, basically. So Graham's really gone down, like, really gone down. 700 knots, TAS, 630. So I think Graham's screwed up there, hasn't he? He's just gone down. Well, you can far. see we've both probably lost each other. I think Graham's lost me at this point. Oh, well. no, I'm, I'm, I can see the, the vector pointing at the top of me. Yeah, it's always yeah. pointing toward you. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, he's going to come around for a nice little attack here then. So, Allo, your thought process was going up. What's that all about? Just trying to find him? Well, not trying to find him, but I know that I don't have visual on him. He, if he's on my six, then I'm just trying to get as high as possible to give myself enough energy to be able to pull some kind of defensive maneuver. Because um, I know that I have no visual. I know that I'm low speed, and the worst thing that I can do is go even lower, because that just, you know puts me in even more disadvantage. So if I get height, then when I do find him or I see a RWR warning that he's on my six, which is what I first see, then I can pull a defensive mover because um, I've got the height to play with energy and things like that. So I'm just fighting for energy at the moment. OK. 
Okay, I mean, on the, okay, right. And the bad thing is that Graham's got you fully, you know, fully in chase mode now with a massive speed advantage. So he's going to come in for guns, guns, guns now, isn't he? So this is where my RWR goes off. <laughs> so you've done a me, you've just stalled it turning around. And he's just going to pick you off and he's missed. Good lucky. This must be the long fight. Okay. This is the spiral. So this oh, is us entering the spiral. This will be interesting. So Graham's had a good shot. He's missed. So be it. So they're going to go into whatever they're going to go into. So you're, what are you thinking now then? You've just merged. You're low speed. I've seen him and I know we're at the top of this peak. Mm -hmm. So the thing with spirals is they're a pain. I know I'm a defensive. I know I'm always going to lose the spiral. But the spiral's always going to give me defense and it's all because mm. he's never going to be able to get a shot on me during that mm. spiral it gives me plenty of time to think of what my next move is mm -hmm. and it also allows for him to potentially make a mistake and overshoot me because i'm such a low right. speed in that spiral so you accept at this point that you're behind and you need to go to i accept that i'm screwed at this point mm -hmm. <laughs> okay okay so let's run that through then and graham you're just thinking oh you just want to pull that stick up don't you and get him back on your nose i'm um so you want to slow down, really, don't you, Graham? Can I just comment yeah. on that lift vector placement, by the way, because that is absolutely He's good at that, easy. isn't he? <laughs> That's very nice. Okay. So here's where. So you can see he's starting to overshoot me. Yeah, that's kind of what I did when I came down on someone. And you're back almost, almost equal, even with Stevens there. You both either side of three hundred knots. And this is where your spiral is going to... S no, hang on. You're this is a merge, isn't it? Right. It's starting. The spiral. scissor has gone into a spiral. Because I can see... Because the air is yeah. so yeah. so I don't want to try to turn behind him. One of the things that, that happens on this... Um, this is a fight that, that you see every day, pretty much. Um, which is that spiral rate fight down to base. Mm -hmm. Because nobody can weaponeer... Uh, and it's very, very easy to maintain the appearance of neutrality down the hill mm -hmm. because you can just keep your lift vector on. And it, it does happen where you'll see it switch sides. If both of the aircraft throw the lift vectors aggressively into lead, they will switch sides, mm -hmm. um, it's, which isn't really an issue. Your job as you're doing this fight is to get to your rate speed. If you don't do that, when we'll talk about it when we get to the bottom, you will have... Uh, you will lose on the on the base transition, and, and we'll talk about that at the bottom of the hill. So, what you need to be doing now, and it almost doesn't matter what the hostile is doing, you need to be at your rate speed and then hold that speed. Uh, mm. Let's say 380 knots. Good figure to hang your hat on for these aircraft. Yeah, right. So at the moment, they're both going at kind of what I'd, what I'd call min radius, kind of like 250 knots or something like that, and they want to get up to maximum rate speed. Okay, which. Yeah, okay, which I'd say is about 400-ish knots for the F-15. Right. Isn't that a bit counterintuitive, though, to what you feels like you want to do? Because you want to yes. <laughs> keep that guy on your lift vector. I mean, at the moment, yep. they can't even get their guys on the lift vector. So you've really got to let go, almost let go control of that. It's going to you be... can, so the, the mech of doing it is to, while looking across at him through the top of your canopy, is just inch the stick forward with mm -hmm. reheat. Mm -hmm. And you just widen it ever so slightly while rolling in, still yeah. with your lift vector and with the nose down, and you should, and you can just accelerate. And if you get 10, 20, 30 knots, whatever that speed is over the bad guy, when you reach base height, mm -hmm. you will be advantageous. Okay, isn't that going to upset you a bit in terms of uh, height? If we're suddenly going from 250 to 400 knots or, or something. Aren't you going to accelerate in terms of downwards more, or is that not an issue? Or will you compensate for that automatically? Or I don't really know. Tough, tough one is. Once you get to that uh, rate speed, then you are turning those angles as fast as you possibly can, and that's mm -hmm. ultimately what you want to do here. Mm -hmm. Now, what if you ended up going too fast? You'll arc, and then the hostile can roll his lift vector and just you know keep you in mm -hmm. essentially defense. So it's it's subtle, and you need to honour the hostile with a lift vector, but you can back off the pull, is what I'm saying. So you can, so Al, let's take Allo here for an example. If he rolls his lift vector the hostile, mm -hmm. stops pulling, and then just goes full reheat, he will keep the lift vector on. He'll widen the circle out, and he'll mm -hmm. accept. 
Right, gotcha. So you just do that in little amounts as you're going down the hill. All right. So let's see whether they actually do it. Uh, like we said, the natural instinct is just trying to pull in, pull into your bad guys. Sorry, I'm trying to stop moving around. So again, Graham demonstrating really nice lift factor, lift factor here. Yeah. That kind of rolling it underneath, tucking under every time he goes past, which is nice. To see. They're both reducing speed, so they're both getting down to stall speed, aren't they? They're both at 200 now. One of the, yeah, one of the, the things I wrote on my notepad here was don't get slow in the rate fight, which mm. both aircraft. Yeah. This guy's got a bit back. Because while you want to weapon ear, uh, it's really, really difficult to do it in these fights. So the best thing to do is just be patient, get the other guy down to base yeah. with you, with the energy. Of but then so he's down to 200, you're, down, you're up at 400. So there's a reason why I'm slowing right down, though. And you'll see my air breaks out and everything as we come out of this. Unfortunately, it didn't. But... I was doing a tactic that I've used on Mav before. When you come out of this, and he's closed the gap so much that if you basically stall your aircraft, he'll go zooming straight past you. Unfortunately, Graham saw it and slowed right down with me. As you can see, he's now down at mm. 160. So you can see I'm full nose up, air break out at this point. Slam the brakes on. Oh, you stalled it, didn't you? Yeah, he's too far. He's going to see that a half a mile back, though, isn't he? Yeah, if he was closer, he would have probably gone past me, though. Um, right. But unfortunately, so what... I knew I'm screwed at this point, so I had two options either do what I did or try and burn away. But there was no coming back from this so um, when we hit this ground. So you, you've been the defender um, of this spiral. So what we should have been thinking as the blue is get to max, get to optimal turn rate, get to, to sub 400 knots or something. And, you know, and just get better seconds than him or better angles as we come round. Uh, and then what, what should he be thinking as he's touching the ground, Mav? I'm presuming the blue guy is going to touch the ground first because he went into the spiral first. So... We're pretty much what we sub a thousand feet here, so we can call this base. Uh, there are two types of base height transitions: angular base transition and the energy rate base transition. In a rate fighter, or in a rate fight, what you want to do is so let's say you know one of these aircraft had reached base height, he'd done a nice smooth conversion, and he'd kept sort of that 380 to 400 knot. The other guy wouldn't be able to get a good control zone mm. from that because he doesn't have the angles and therefore let's say Aloe did it the blue fighter just marches round and round and round and shoots red in the bum right gotcha if you're really slow you can't do it um, so if the hostile is on your six close and you you know if by trying to get to rate speed you're, you're going to stop turning you clearly can't do that energy rate based transition. That's when you would do the angular based transition where you, yeah, as Allo pretty much said, you threw everything out, you pull towards him and you get as many angles as you can mm -hmm. to keep him stuck in nose lag so he can't gun you. Yeah. Basically all you've got. Because at the end of the day, if your gun's defensive, you're fucked. Yeah. You can only do so much. Mm. Cool. Okay. So yeah, this is my last hurrah of he's either going to overshoot me or he's going to kill me, one or the other. Right, so it's worth a go, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Right, nice one, guys. Good fight that was, really good. Okay, let's zoom to the next one. Uh, we got... Oh, for fuck, this won't last very long, will it? This one lasts a while, actually. Does it? It's probably... Oh, uh, this is... I might skip this one, guys, because it's me basically... We'll do it a little bit, but it's me doing my runaway thing and it just gets a bit crappy right so interestingly joker is pointing you know he's pointing towards me now there are a couple of useful points that we can bring out of this um if you okay. sort of went through it at two times speed or whatever i can point them out to you Roger, well, let's just have a quick look what it does so interesting i've actually done a good turn then i've, I've turned beforehand he's going to go up as he likes to do i'm going to go round um too fast because i'm a silly monkey um, and I'm just I'm nose down. It's quite it's all right. Well, it's an all right turn. No, it's terrible. It's eight degrees per second. How could I turn so badly? God, that's why I lose. Uh, Joker's uh, gone uh, down. He's already got my six because I've done such a shit turn. So just remember that vertical counter. If you'd have turned and pointed at him earlier, you would have neutralised this a bit. Roger. So if I was down here. Probably even earlier than that by the time it takes you to turn. 
So yeah. if you, yeah, at about this point, if you go to turn it in, if you imagine how that would play forward, you would pass neutrally at, at you know, some random angle. Yeah, right, okay. Okay. So he's going to get on my six. I already has won the fight, but I'm not going to give up. And I'm finally pulling in now. He's not that far behind me. I mean, I'm not I'm not that far behind. Okay, I've gone nose down this case, which I shouldn't have done. So there's one, yeah, there's one thing you do in this fight, which I put a big plus next to, which is aggressive lift vector, not honoured by the whole... Mm -hmm. And I think it might have been that, when you just tuck under, and or maybe later on, but you, you tuck really aggressively low. And no, it can't be this, because that looks kind of mad. Mm -hmm. So what's the point where you had the perfect reversal and you didn't pull it through? <laughs> So I'm just doing my run of runny away thing here, 700. No, I'm not turning. Don't really know what I'm doing actually. So you don't away. know where he is at this point, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So my technique, and uh, this obviously isn't a real fighter technique, but it has actually worked for me before. Is that what I'm doing now? Is that I'm gonna I've lost him. I don't know where he is anymore, but I know I'm in the shit. So I like to turn and thinking about it, this isn't actually a very good idea. But I like to turn at kind of 700 TAS and turn at full 9G, so you're fully blacked out, and that means that I can't. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, but from my experience, it means that this kind can't get a shot and he can't get a lead on me because he he'd have to even pull it pull even tighter. But thinking about it, in retrospect, this guy could be going a lot slower, couldn't he? So he wouldn't be have to pull such a high G. So let's have a look at that. So you see, I'm maxing out here at 8G. If um, you go no joy, which can happen, you're either going to be dead, or there's mm. one thing that I would suggest, is, um, which is to essentially enter a spiral rate fight down to base mm -hmm. on your own right. with while flaring. Is that because he has to join in? Well, it actually, it just cuts the angles that he can come from to only above you as opposed to below. Yeah. So that's the, that's the only reason for it, is that okay. if you're at base height, he can't come from underneath. Right. Therefore, so, you're more likely to see him. Right. So if, you go, if you've lost tally and you don't know what's going on and you assume you've got altitude, then into a spiral. Pretty much the only thing you can do, yeah. Roger. Because obviously a good adversary would will be taking advantage of every single bit of time that your lift vector isn't honouring him, mm -hmm. and so the only thing you can do is is to go and do that, node your game plan essentially. Mm -hmm. But it's it you know it 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 has slightly more chance of success than uh, doing nothing, but. Mm -hmm. One of the things I, I also note on here is I put uh, good patience by he's not um, he's either BFMing or weaponeering he's not trying to do both at the same time mm -hmm. so he's just making sure he stays on your turn circle mm -hmm. nicely here I mean this is really nice mm -hmm. you know he he pulls for the shot he gets back onto the circle and so no matter what you do because he's in your control zone at mm -hmm. about two and a half thousand feet you can't shake him mm -hmm. it's it's a nice job so it's, so he's not making a mistake basically yeah. Right, I'm going to go for my Joker card, I think, which is just to outrun it. No, I'll just give up. Right, that's that. That was uh, frustrating. Let's go. I don't know if sure we've got any more. One more, I think, chaps. It's a very quick one. I black out. Rookie mistake. <laughs> Does it just end? Hopefully there's a bit of better right. lift factor and merge shaping on this one. Hopefully get something out of it. Right, uh, so you've got the kind of this crank angle again that I see. It's good, good 20 degrees or something, isn't it? So once again, I know I'm going to lose the one circle fight, just from visual on him. He's further out and pulling into me already, so I go for the two circle. So he's already turned around, what, a mile in advance, yep. basically, rolled over, already pulling back. And so by the time the merge happens, look at that angle. It's, it's so I go for the two circle. I'm going to sneeze, anyway. So I've got a <laughs> few angles, maybe 15 degrees. <laughs> Roger. <sighs> okay. Both fast. Oops. Jesus, what happened there? I think it was lag, wasn't it? 
I think it was just a really aggressive turn. Jeez, that was <laughs> aggressive, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, you're at 12... Jesus Christ. It was 700 knots, 12 Gs, and a turn rate of 20 degrees per second in a full, fully fueled plane. That's interesting. So that's a bit hard back on the stick. But the plane's recovered. Uh, so Mav decided to go down quite aggressively here, which I've never seen before. Um, almost kind of vertically down. What was the thinking behind this? It's because we're in a two circle fight. He's noticed we're in a two circle fight. So he's trying to cut the circle. Yeah. So if he literally pulls back and does a 180 instead of a 360, instead of carrying out that circle, mm -hmm. he's going to cut the circle in half and be able to get on my. Okay. So what you'll find here is I'll actually get into a missile wars pretty quickly. So I used the height available. The thing that I was really struggling with was, was G and keeping my little virtual man awake because he was... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I ended up blacking out because we're just really aggressive on each that other. That was very, I mean, you're both huge tasks at the moment. And I'm flying too fast here for sure. So that's the thing. So that's a, it's a, it's a big difference between real pilots and virtual pilots, isn't it, though? That virtual pilots don't have that feel to be able to, you know, judge what the plane is actually doing. Yeah, and and you know when you're at 9G. Yeah. Mm. Um, but at, at the same time, you know, if you're full back stick, you're at 9G, you feel that it's, it's hard work, it starts to back off. And as it starts to back off, you know that you're approaching that rate back. Um, because it, mm -hmm. you know, the aircraft wouldn't be able to sustain 9G at, at those sort of speeds at those mm -hmm. heights. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm what I'm doing here. So I think when the lift vector comes off, I'm blacking out a bit. But again, I put it as low as I can underneath him uh, yep, to again that. just try and use as much height as I can. Mm -hmm. So we've all lost a lot of altitude this time. And then we come in on a merge again. I decide. He's got this advantage. He's got 90, come in, he's, so I, he's got 90 degrees yeah, on you, hasn't he? So I go to reverse it and pull too hard, blackout. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just too aggressive on the F-15 there. And that's the end of it. Okay, uh, I think that is the end of it, chaps, isn't it? Cool. Well, it's, it's very good. And, um, so that's what the viewers wanted. They wanted to see, you know, what the thought process should be, and that's kind of what we're given. Um, I mean, you could do a hundred dogfights and get a different thought process, thought process each time, really, couldn't you? Because it's a lot of it's reactive. It's one thing that I've learned today. You a lot of practice and drilling and techniques and these things. You need to, you know, practice this daily to get. Okay. Cool. Good fun. That's just I enjoy doing that, guys. We should do stuff like this more often. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, I love doing it. Uh, yeah. That's what DCS is all about. In my uh, the main advice to anyone doing this stuff is go on to a server, practice exactly what we did, but the most important bit is the debrief of actually finding mm -hmm. out where you went wrong, where you lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where you're going to learn most, isn't it? I mean, this this tack view is a, is a better tool than anything that, you know, Funny exists that, isn't it? in, in, in military, real, yeah, uh, in terms of data recording, mm. um, and it's absolutely excellent because you get the lift vector placement, you get mm. the speeds, everything's all, and it's you know high fidelity, it's all synced up, uh, it's great. So I, I might speak to you about how to, or someone about how to get this working. Um, yeah. On a different note, mm. sort of top BFM tips wise, mm. I would say uh, maybe maybe three. The first is defend, engage, shape, lead turn. Don't get killed on the way into the merge. Shoot him on the way into the merge. Put your aircraft where you want to be for the merge and then take the lead turn as appropriate for it. Well, that's a good shout out for the uh, GR training program. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. Well, thanks very much, guys. Thanks to Mav for turning up. and a busy man, obviously. And uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll knock some more stuff together, even if it's just fun talking through dogfights like this. It's, I enjoyed, well, we all just all enjoyed doing it, like you said. So that's cool. Right, I better go and start doing some things. I'll catch you boys later.